What's up everybody, John Arapola here with my MMA News and today's guest is coming off a second round TKO win over Shanna Young at UFC Vegas 38 earlier this month. I'm talking to Stephanie Egger here today. She's kind enough to join us from her house out in uh, Switzerland actually here. So uh, a few hours ahead of us here in the United States. Really appreciate the time here today. Thank you so much for, for doing this and scheduling this with us. Really appreciate it. Hi, thank you for having me here. Thank you. Hey, no problem at all. So let's start first with uh, the reception back home. Of course, the fight was out in Las Vegas, Nevada, here in the United States. When you got back home to Switzerland, what was the reaction like when you got to see all the Swiss fans out there? Yeah, um, I had a, a very nice welcome at the airport from my family. So that was pretty nice when I came back. And uh, I've had a really good reaction on my for my fight because my first fight wasn't that good so in my second fight i could show um a good performance so the reaction was really good from um, the swiss people here so how about out in las vegas too after the fight i know vegas is a big party area did you get to go out and celebrate and do anything fun after your fight or no um, yeah, after the fight, um, we visiting Vegas and um, do a little bit of gambling um, and for sure we had a good dinner. So it was really nice there. So where did you go and sightsee when you were out in Vegas? What did you do for fun there? I know you said gambling and everything else, but you said that you did see a couple of different things. What did you go and check out there? Um, we were at the Strip for sure and at the casinos. And um, we were eating burgers at Gordon Ramsay, I think. That was really good. Uh, they do have very good burgers there, Gordon Ramsay. I've had them before. So anyway, let's get into this fight now here a little bit. We'll start breaking it down. Before we get into the second round and the finish, let's talk about that opening round there. Just kind of break that round down for us and kind of how you think it went in your opinion. Okay. Um, first of all, I, in the beginning, I was a little bit surprised because um, she stands southpaw. So I was a little bit surprised in the beginning. Um, but then after a few minutes, I found my range. I, and um, then I got the takedown. And then I was in the half guard and I was a little bit um, too lazy on my pressure and she could go um, deep half and go for the heel hook. But um, I wasn't scared, but I couldn't get out my foot, but I wasn't, I wasn't scared, but I couldn't get out um, my foot. And after a while, I couldn't, I get out and I give her some punches and then I think the round was finished first yeah so that was so my my few from the first round so now let's talk about the second round then where you ultimately got the finish in here uh the big thing on the internet afterwards you saw all over the place was saying quick stoppage I know we talked about this briefly uh off air before we came on and started recording this here uh you said though you thought the stoppage was fair. You landed a big elbow um, that was that hurt her. Kind of just take us through that whole entire sequence of kind of what what took place in that. Um, it starts with um, I had um, double no, over overhooks, double overhooks on her, and I feel the pressure, and I knew okay, I I can go for for the throw, even with the double overhooks. Normally, it's not so good if you do that, but I felt it's possible, so I throw this Harai Goshi. And um, after that, I had a really good position. After judo throw, you have mostly good position in top of her. So um, then I worked with some punches. And I feel I can now do the elbow with my whole weight, and I do it and i knew okay this one was a really really good one and she turned around and do like um this defense um like a embryo and then i get some more punches but um yeah i i i felt it's it was a really good one so i'm not sure if the ref 
Um, if the ref was too early, um, for sure I can give her more punches and then he has to step in. So it was a, a question of time when he go in and stop the fight. And then, of course, afterwards you said you wanted to stay ready. So I guess the question then becomes, when exactly do you want to fight again? I know, like you said, you want to stay ready. Is that maybe do you get one in before the end of the year or are you looking kind of early at next year now? No, I would love to fight this year. And I already um, back in training, do some sparring, do everything. Um, yeah, I want to... I want to stay ready and I would love to fight um, this year or for sure in the beginning of next year, but I would prefer to fight this year again. And now, like you said there, you're already back in the gym, kind of getting your body ready. Well, a big storyline coming into this fight was you actually had a training camp for it. Your first fight when you made your UFC debut, it was on short notice. Everything was kind of rushed. Just how much better was it getting that full time to prepare for an opponent and kind of getting your body all situated and adjusted and ready for fight night as opposed to just rushing in there like that? Yeah, for sure. It's nice if you have a training camp. Also, um, the mental aspect, you can get ready uh, in your head that you have to fight. And for me, um, it was good to have the camp and train hard. And after my loss, I changed little things around my camp, um, bring some new trainers in. And I think um, that was a good decision. And um, yeah, we continue to work and um, yeah, we want to get better every fight. And now Switzerland, of course, uh, it's known for a lot of outdoorsy things like skiing and snowboarding. Also, of course, tennis is big over there too, right? Uh, Roger Federer, Stan Wawrinka. Uh, how exactly, I guess, do you end up like with all of that going on there? How exactly did you become a fighter like that? Yeah, yeah. I started with judo when I was younger and do also some tournaments and on, on a high level. Um, but then I stopped and uh, I was looking for my um, prof uh, for my um, university stuff and uh, then I start um, look looked for a new challenge and start with grappling but just for fun. <laughs> but after this fun time, I was okay. I'm pretty good in this and then I do some boxing and then they said, yeah, you can fight. If you want, you can try it. And then I said, okay, I will try it. And then it's from there, okay, one fight more, another one. And then I was in into MMA, but it wasn't planned at all. So after the judo career, I was thinking, okay, I, for now it's good. But then I found MMA and continue my sport career there. So we see a lot of fighters from Europe a lot of times that they do like to stay in Europe to do a lot of work there, but they will come to the U.S. and also put some time in, in this country as well. Do you ever plan on doing that, coming over here, spending some time and doing work, or are you okay with just doing everything right out of Switzerland like you've been doing? Yeah, I already did so spend some time in the U.S. Um, we were at Team Alpha Male with Uraya, trained there for three or four or five weeks and once we were in dynamic striking in Los Angeles. Uh, it was a pretty good time um, but it's also expensive there so um, if you have to pay the bills here in Switzerland and live there um, yeah it's pretty hard to to move um, to US so um, for a moment we do it all here in Switzerland. All right. I do have a few questions about Switzerland, too, that I want to ask you. Um, one of which I kind of related to earlier. I was talking about how it's kind of known for definitely like skiing and snowboarding. Of course, tennis, like I said, with Feder and Warwinka there. Uh, do you ever do anything like that for fun when you're not fighting? What, what, what can I do in your free time out there in Switzerland? Do you ski or snowboard or do anything like that? Yes, in the winter time, I do some snowboarding. Um, I love it. Um, it's it's uh, so nice to be in the nature, in the mountains, and um, do some snowboarding. In the summertime, 
Um, I do some swimming in the lakes. Um, yeah. And uh, we have a dog, so uh, I'm every day outside in the nature. So, yeah, you can hear him. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to be outside in the nature when I'm not in training. I was going to ask you about the dog, too. I see all the photos on your Instagram with the dog. What kind of dog do you have and what are kind of the fun things you guys get to do with the dog? Yeah, he's an old English bulldog. He's one year old and yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun with him. Um, he is a gym dog. We say every time he's a gym dog, when people come to the gym, he goes and say everybody hello and he's like a, a mascot from our gym. So he is pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, and he, he's adorable too. I like seeing the photos on your Instagram of him. And one other thing I wanted to ask you too about Switzerland. Everybody says that Swiss chocolate is absolutely to die for and it's like the best in the world. Is that true? Just how good is the chocolate over there? And what is something that you would prefer to somebody if they were traveling through there to get? That's absolutely true. I love chocolate. I eat everyday chocolate. When I drink my coffee, um, I need some chocolate. So um, yeah, Swiss chocolate is the best one for sure. Yeah. Is there a yeah. kind that you would recommend to people to, to get if they were traveling through there? Oh, we have a lot of good, uh, good brands. Um, but I like uh, Lindt chocolate and uh, Minor, Minor chocolate. Yeah, these two, they are my favorites. All right, definitely have to try that out one of these times. Uh, Stephanie, really appreciate the time here today. One last thing, though, before you head out. Uh, go ahead, plug your social media, uh, management, sponsors, anybody that you want to give a shout-out to. You get the last word. Floor is yours. Yeah, um, so my Instagram account is uh, La Steffi. Uh, my Facebook account is Stephanie Egger. And I want to thank uh, my manager, Marcelo, from MTK MMA. So, yeah, he makes this fight happen. And, um, yeah, I want to thank my training partners and trainers. All right, Stephanie, really appreciate the time here today. Thank you so much for, again, taking the time to, to do this here with us and answering all the different questions, too, about Switzerland that I had there. So, again, really appreciate it, and I appreciate all you guys that uh, come here and watch these interviews. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you go to the bottom, subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you like today's interview, make sure you go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well. And also keep going to my main news, checking out our great work that comes there, our social media pages as well. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just go ahead and make sure to give us a like and a follow on those accounts as well. And if you want to go ahead and find me on social media, I'm at John Eric Poli on Instagram and Twitter. We'll see you later, everybody.